So this is just a really quick and basic tutorial on how to make one of the wee wallaby or kangaroo pouches. So this is the 3D one, so it'll kind of curve out and you can also put it through a pole. So basically all we've done is cut out our outer fabric and our inner fabric and the recommended sizes, which we'll also put in the text. So this is the wallaby one, so it's slightly smaller. Your outside fabric should be something a bit heavier, like denim or canvas. Mm -hmm. You also then have your lining, which can also be a lightweight cotton. First of all, we're going to fold them in half. So starting with the outer one, your seam allowance is going to be 1.5 round it. At the corner that's folded, I've put a wee curve here. This is just to help it sit nice down at the bottom at the back. So this will give it its shape. All I've done is come up, marked the 1.5 at the two sides, got something that's round, joined up and came round like so. So just to reiterate, that is on the folded edge down at the bottom. You then want to do the exact same on your lining. All we're going to do now is you're going to sew the 1.5 seam allowance down around the corner and back to the edge, keeping this long open side open and across the top. So that's in both your outside piece and your lining piece. Just a normal straight stitch with a decent stitch length. So in this machine, I've gone for stitch length that's two. So remember to do your back tack to reinforce your stitching at the start and at the end. You do not want to cut open this uh, folded edge, you want to keep that folded. This is just going to give it extra security and it's going to be less likely to break basically. So kind of like a French seam. You then want to repeat this stitching, like I said, on your lining piece. So feel free to use pins and things like that. I am just a bit lazy. So your fabrics need to be 100% cotton, no synthetic fabrics and things like that, just in case I forgot to say that at the start. Again though, all of this will be in the text that goes along with images. Next, what you're going to want to do is you're going to put the two pieces together, right sides together. So your two good sides are going to go together. So if you put this one and this one, so just matching up your seams. Mm -hmm. Making sure they're both on the curved edges or together. So you put your one curved edge there. Mm -hmm. 
and that's going to get put in against this other curved edge here. So just in like so. You don't need to worry about cutting off all your seam allowances and things like that. If anything, it might make it a bit stronger. So that's my two curved edges, my seam, sitting on top of the other seam. I'd recommend lying one seam going one way, one seam going the other, like so. Helps it uh, be a bit less bulky. What you're going to do next is you're going to sew right round this giant edge. So we're not going to go along the top, we're just going to go down, round and back up to the edge. Again, if you feel a bit less confident you can use pins. I also recommend using your lining fabric at the bottom when you're sewing because this probably has a bit more stretch in it or give. So that's the bottom and again just your 1.5 right round this. I'm just going over that first seam, just keeping the raw edges matched up nicely. So these machines are great because I can actually see what my seam allowance is on this big rated bit. Obviously if your machine doesn't have that, eh, just do some wee marks to just keep you eh, to that 1.5 centimetre seam allowance. So if you've never made bags on anything before, this might look a bit weird because it's basically inside out. But as we left the top edge opened, you can actually pull it through. So then what you get is nice finished sides. So what you should then have is just this lined shape like so. What I'd recommend doing is now going round it again on the top and edge stitching this just to stop this bagging out so much and it'll just sit a bit neater. So I'm going to quickly just run round that again on the right side this time. Again, if you're a perfectionist, you can iron this at this time. I'm just going to make sure I roll the seams out as I go, nice and neat. So for this, I'm just putting the edge of the fabric against the edge of the foot instead of the 1.5 centimetres this time. So, so far as you can see, the sewing itself isn't that hard. There's just quite a bit of fabric, especially if you make the bigger one, the kangaroo pouch.
So again, we've just got this big curved bag that's open at your edge here and across the top. So obviously we still have this open edge up here. But first of all, what we need to do to make it sit like the 3D pouch in the pictures you might have seen, we're going to have to take your two edges and bring them in to the centre seam here. Like so. Just so once this is finally stitched across the top here, it will sit like so. So this is just giving it the 3D shape. So again, I'll just bring that back to where it was. Sitting flat, you've done your size, you've done your top stitching. You're going to want to bring your two outer corners in to meet the middle here. So you should have a seam here. We're just going to bring it in like so. And to see if you're all sitting watching me sewing again, all you're basically going to do after that is stitch right across here. So ideally, I would probably cross these over slightly, maybe about a centimetre or so. You're doing your 1.5 seam allowance across the top. You can then finish it off with some bias binding, either bought bias binding or if you have scraps from your homemade one. And then you are going to want to either put loops on each end to put a pull through or what you can do when this is finished nicely at the top is fold it over a centimetre and stitch across the top for a pull to go through. There's various different ways to finish it off and there's different ways that you can find on Facebook if you need a more detailed video of how to finish it, you can just let us know and we'll help you with that. Um, so as I mentioned, there's various ways you can finish the top here. I've decided to just do two rows of stitching across the top when it's folded to secure it. I've folded my wee outside bits like that. To be fair, you could have just overlapped them. I've then got the overlocker out and overlocked this edge instead of um, using bias binding. Again, just saving time and things like that. This doesn't need to look pretty, it's um, for practical use. Then all I've done is made four straps by simply cutting out a rectangle, putting my right sides together along the longest edge, doing a centimetre seam down here and pulling through to give me this. So I've then attached ones at either edge and then I'll have the two in the centre here as well. Again, doesn't need to be that pretty as long as it can hold um, that shoe. So various ways to finish the top. If you'd like us to explain another way, you can just drop us a wee message. But hopefully um, you've got a good idea of how it should get put together now.